Hello, here's another follow-up video about my synth project. This time I want to talk about the inside, the electronics. So the brain of my synth is actually um, a Teensy 3.1, actually you could get a 3.2, it doesn't make a difference, and the audio shield. Uh, these are actually connected as if they were stacked. Uh, I'm doing this for place reasons. And um, and then actually this is connected to uh, all the, the various inputs that I'm reading. Um, the inputs really come into different sections. Um, first I have the keys and the way that I'm reading those is I'm reusing the original keyboard matrix from the from the Bang Tempe uh, keyboard that I built this from. So this is another one that's actually identical. Um, and so this is what I got. Um, and I removed the original chip, the sound chip, and the only thing that I'm using is the keyboard matrix. The way that I'm selecting the rows for the keyboard matrix is actually through this ribbon cable here that is connected to a multiplexer. And the input of the multiplexer is connected to ground. So that means that uh, what I'm selecting when I'm selecting one of the various inputs, uh, well, outputs of the, the multiplexer is that I'm connecting one of those with ground. This then selects the row and then this is then collect, uh, connected to the, the columns and each of the columns is then connected to one of the input pins on the Teensy and this is what I'm, what I'm reading then. Um, so I go through all of the columns with the multiplexer using the three inputs and the, the three selector uh, pins and then I read the data uh, for, for the currently selected row um, with one pin uh, per column. Then I have four groups that are actually identical here uh, that each of them has a multiplexer and all of these use the same uh, selection uh, connections and um, each of them has one input pin that is actually connected uh, well the input pin of the multiplexer is connected to a dedicated pin on the Teensy. And then what I'm doing is that I'm connecting all of the, the, the inputs of the multiplexer and, um, and they go, they are then connected to the ribbon cable and go through always groups of, of eight inputs. I'm putting some small uh, capacitors here uh, connected uh, between the inputs and ground. This is to avoid uh, just fluctuations of the um, of the the readings, and as you can see, um, actually all of the inputs that I have here on the front side, uh, they're treated the same way independently of what they are. So, uh, well, they're all treated like potentiometers. The faders um, are yes potentiometers. The the knobs uh, as well. The ones uh, that are switches like this are actually connected, uh, they're rotary switches that have uh, resistors between each of the, between each of the, the, the legs uh, and this gives me uh, the, the possibility to read 12 different positions with a single, uh, with a single connection, which is quite practical. The only problem that I have here is that since these rotary switches make uh, temporary connections to like between two pins when you're between them uh, when you go from uh, from the 12th position to the last one to the first position um, then you connect for a very short uh, short moment uh, ground to plus and then this causes a, a short so at the moment the way i solve this is just by making sure that I don't go from 12 to 1. If you have an idea of how I can solve this, um, yeah, definitely let me know. I'm, I'm interested. Otherwise, 
Um, I think that, yeah, that's that's all I can think about for the for now. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions that are not related to electronics, let me know. What I'm planning on doing already is doing um, a little bit of explanation how I'm programming the TNC and how I'm using the audio shield. Um, and yeah, that's that's it for today. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, looking forward to to hear what you have to say about this.